So in the first couple of examples, what we did is we actually used an expression to find our nth term of a sequence. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to write our sequences. So um, whenever you look at your first few terms to define a sequence, um, you have to make sure that you give your final expression also. So what you may have to do is you may have to go through more than just your first couple expressions. So if you look at here, one, two, three, one, two, three. All these first three expressions are the exact same. Well, when you get to the fourth expression, oh hey, we have a one over 16, and here we have a one over 15. That's gonna change your final answer. Now for the top, you end up getting a one over two to the nth. So think about two to the nth. That means you're just taking two to the first. Your first term is two to the first power. Second term is two to the second power. Second, third term is two to the third power, and two to the fourth, and so on and so on. Down here on the bottom, don't worry, you're probably not going to have to write any of these. Probably, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but this gets a little bit different. So like your first term, you plug a one in for n. So you have a two, and then over, you get over here, you plug that in. Um, you get like a one over two. Here you plug in your two for n, simplify. Here you plug in your three, simplify. Oh, here you plug in your four, simplify, but it's not the same. So this is a little more of a delicate situation. Well, <laughs> Hey look, there's my milkshake. Just kidding, that's not really my milkshake. That's Elizabeth, so Elizabeth, thanks for the picture. Sorry, there are no boys in your yard, but stay optimistic. Um, let's look at our example three. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to write an expression for your apparent nth term for each sequence. And you're gonna be given you know, five, six terms of your sequence and you're gonna have to come up with an expression for it. So the easiest thing to do is probably to write out, you know, whatever uh, terms you have or whatever your n values are. So these are your number of terms. So you have one, two, three, four, five. And then what you wanna do is you wanna figure out, well, what are your actual terms? So our first term is a one. So we need to figure out, well, what can we do to one to get a one? Well, you can multiply by one. That'd be really easy or just say n. Um, your second term is a five. Well, we can't just say that our expression is n because if it was an n, that would be a two. So, well, that doesn't really help us. We have a nine, we have a 13, and we have a 17. Those are two pretty ugly numbers. A 13 and a 17. So you may notice that there is a pattern going in for all of these. Um, you are, each time, you are actually increasing this by adding four. So here you're adding four. So this is one of your simpler ones where you're trying to find your pattern each time you're adding four. And what happens is then we need to come up with some expression to help us relay that. So if we have a n is equal to, um, <clears throat> if you just say four n, or n plus four, that's not gonna work out as well. You say an n plus four because for your first term, if you plug a one in here, one plus four is five, well your first term is not a five. So we're gonna have to change this. Well, I will give you a little shortcut. If you have a problem that each time you're adding or subtracting something, well this number here is gonna end up being what I would call your slope of a y equals mx plus b. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna figure out, well, four times n, so four times your first number, what can you do to four times our first number, which is a one? How can we get a one? So, well, if you take put a one in here, you get a four. Four minus what gives you a one? That's gonna end up being four minus three. So let's see if that works for your second term. So if we plug a two in for our second term, so say we're gonna plug a two in, four times two is eight, eight minus three is a five. Boom. Let's try a third term. Four times three is 12. 12 minus three is nine. Dang. Awesome. All right, that is gonna be your more simple type of problem. Where you have something that's a nice simple addition, all your terms are adding or subtracting by a common term. And remember that common term ends up just being your slope in front of your n here. All right, b is not as nice. Uh, for letter b, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to figure out what in the world is happening here. So your terms, you have you know, first term, second term, 
third term, fourth term, and our fifth term. And for each of those terms, well, they're already written out, but I'll write them again. You have a two. Oh, hey, I noticed I'm gonna switch signs. So almost any time you switch signs, what you're gonna have is a negative one to some power in your answer. So almost every time there's a sign change. Okay, if you have a sign change in between your terms, you're gonna have a negative one to the nth power somewhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what is happening here. So we can either have an n or we can have a negative one to the n minus one. <coughs> so let's figure out what we can do for our first term. So if we have a one here for our n, one, if we plug just a, a one in there, well, that'd be a negative one. Well, negative one plus what gives you a two? Well, you could say negative one plus a three if you wanted to try that. I do that here. So if we just try something like negative one to the n, and then you add three. So that would give us a two. So if you plug a one in here, negative one to the first is a negative one, negative one plus three gives you two. So let's try it for your second term. So negative one squared is a one, one plus three is a four. That, oh, well, that's not gonna help us out. That's a bummer, that's a bummer. So maybe this isn't gonna work. So what you have to do is you have to keep trying and working through this problem. So since this doesn't work, we're gonna have to play around with some more stuff. So um, you probably won't have one that's super difficult like this, but what we're gonna do is if you keep playing around, you're gonna end up with a negative one to the n minus one power. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an n cubed plus one. So looking at this, you're like, how in the world am I supposed to get that? Honestly, the best way I can tell you is trial and error. Um, there's no great way, no set way, you know, like there was up in example A to say, hey, this is how you do this. Um, except for noticing the sign change, you know you're going to need negative one to either the n minus one or the nth power. Uh, you're just going to have to keep trying different combinations to try to get this. So like I said, I'm just real sorry. We keep plugging 